So today I want to check out a interesting distribution called Kai OS. Let's check it out. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video. And today I want to do another distro review. And on the chopping block for today is Kai OS. And this is a Arch-based Linux distribution. Uh, it uses the KDE desktop. Um, and what they say is that KDE is supposedly lean on this distribution of Linux. And so I really want to check out how many, how much the resources are being used on the system. Uh, and I'll kind of compare them to another KDE installation that I have in a virtual machine as well. Once we get this thing installed, but I looked at Kai OS a while back within a live stream. I think I just used it as, um, one of the topics of the live stream and I kind of covered the installation as well as. A little bit of looking at the desktop environment because I had never heard of it before that day but it looks super interesting I wanted to revisit it and go back to it and actually do a video on it uh, to check it out for you guys show you guys what it's all about so let's get to it and hop over to the website and show you guys a little bit about Kai OS before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, cool. So we are at KaiOSX.us. And of course, I always have the link down in the description of the video. But this is the link to the website, or this is what the website looks like. As you can see, it says a lean KDE distribution. Now, for some reason, they kind of uh, leave out that it's kind of Orch based, but I'm going off the of assumption as well as uh, other documentation I've read that it is based on Orch Linux. And when we when I played with it before, you know, I noticed that it used the Pac-Man package manager, which is typically used on Orch. It's also a rolling release. And I think they're just trying to separate themselves from the Orch, you know, uh, distros that are out there and kind of make it their own thing while still using the, the way Orch is kind of built. But as you can see right there, it says Kai OS is a independent distribution focused on QT and KDE. You know what I'm saying? So they are independent. That's why they had that in bold, <laughs> you know, um, but that's just based on what I've seen, you know, with the, the actual operating system. And one of the things I wanted to check out on their page, or at least show you guys that the frequently asked questions, just so you can get a better understanding of what the operating system is. As you can see, it says uh, here, we'll try to address, you know, the most commonly encountered questions or issues. Who is the target audience? Uh, basically, I would say, you know, people that are interested in KDE Plasma and they believe it's the best. And I'm just summarizing it. They believe that KDE is the best desktop environment, even though I tend to disagree. But that's one of the cool things about Linux. You know, you have the choice to decide on what you want to use. You're not stuck with just one thing uh, like the other distribute or operating systems like Mac OS and Windows. You stuck with Windows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can customize it a little bit but with Linux you could totally change the desktop environment if you don't like it but that's their target audience for this distro it's a KDE distro at the end of the day they only use KDE desktop environment so if you're not interested in KDE and I kind of see how it um it'll be lower on the resources because they use K uh QT you know what I'm saying for certain applications I believe that helps out with the resources on the, on the system uh, that's one of the other things that it talks about on 
within here. And then the hardware requirements, you need at least, you know, eight gigabytes on a hard drive, you know, 25 gigabytes is recommended, you know, for a minimal, you know, installation. And then, you know, one gigabyte of RAM, but you wanna have more, you know, two, two gigabytes, I think is the minimum for a much better, you know, experience. And then also it's a x86, 64, you know, or a 64 bit, you know, architecture. And then one cool thing about it, I think I said this a little earlier, but this distribution does have a rolling release model. So you don't have to worry about releases and all that stuff. Like kind of like Ubuntu, how they have a release every couple years, two years or so. Uh, they'll have a long-term supported release and then they have their releases in between that. Uh, well, this is a rolling release, so it'll just keep going. Just to kind of explain that. But a couple, but a couple other things I wanted to show you on the website. Um, this is where you actually download the ISO. I already have it downloaded. I won't go through, you know, showing you any of that. Uh, but the documentation is one of those things I wanted to show you. Uh, basically, you know, your basic uh, setup of the operating system, ISO install, you know, hardware setup, you know, Nvidia, you know, all, all your stuff that you need to look at. You you want to look at this documentation. Uh, once you get it installed, you know what I'm saying to fix any problems that you may come up Come up with especially with your like your hardware and all that stuff. They have some documentation here and then uh, Packages they have a you know kind of a repository list you can search packages here uh, You got bugs over here uh, And yeah, like I said, that's an online package where you can just search uh, You can also expand and look at the apps that you have available to you within the repository. So uh, you got your apps build core main uh, mirror status you know flags and to me uh they don't they don't want to say it's orange base or they don't want to put it in there but yeah it's orange base you can kind of tell i mean once you start looking at it you can kind of tell that it's orange base especially if you use orange um you know what i'm saying uh which i understand i mean i understand do what you do you know no problem or whatever with that uh but then bugs you can go in here check out the bug uh you know page and then they also have a form uh, so you check that out if you have any questions or you need any help uh, definitely go over to the forum all right so I already had the ISO downloaded let's go through the install right fast I'll switch over to my virtual machine we can go through the install all right cool so once you get the ISO booted up this is what you'll be greeted with it's kind of like a grub menu uh, you can go into the start Kai OS live and then they have a Nvidia 9 free uh, boot from hard disk, you know, that'll basically just switch it over to go to the hard disk uh, Which nothing is on this hard disk obviously because it's a brand new system uh, Hardware detection tool. So that's super cool. That's included as well as a memory test tool uh, So that's awesome. Let's go on in uh, start Kai live and it should go straight into the um live iso as well as the installer popping up i believe from what i remember when i did this thing before all right cool cool so this is kai os like i said it's super cool uh i like the way it looks as far as the design that they use for this uh it's super dope uh now let me go down and change this display settings right fast uh that way it'll look right on the screen while i'm recording and let's move this up so we can hit apply, boom, hit uh, keep, close that out, cool. All right, cool, so this is the desktop environment. This is the live ISO, uh, and what we wanna do is just go down and install, but I wanted to go through a couple things on here. So you got a guide, you know, uh, you got the form, a link to the form, the documentation, so you can kind of use this right off as a live ISO to test it out to make sure it works. Now, if we go into here, this will show you the password. So if it if it locks on you, uh, that's the username and password. So root roots and then live live. So uh, that's what that is. And then about this is just that same information we've seen on the website. But as you can see, you know, it's a little bit more in depth and then package list goes through a lot of the packages that will be installed when you install it. So let's go on and um, get the install going. And I may have misspoke. I don't think that's the packages that will be installed. Uh, but the installer looks super cool. This is totally different from the last time I installed it. Um, you know what I'm saying? It looks 
totally different you know the way he's got the release notes known issues you know donate over there uh this is super cool so select that language uh and then the buttons over here so you can cancel right there and then you got all your tabs of what you're gonna go through you know while you're getting this thing installed but the current language is american english so i'm not gonna go in and change it or look at it let's just go next and right here it kind of already picked up my location um yeah and you guys know i live in vegas i always talk about it but yeah that's that's kind of crazy that it's so accurate you know what i'm saying to where it picked up that i am in las vegas and not los angeles that's crazy <laughs> but let's go down and roll with with the defaults defaults on the keyboard you know we're good to go uh now this is you know a cool little spot right here it asks you what you want for uh, your office packages so uh libre office obviously i like libre office and then you can also select no office suites uh but we're gonna roll with that and then you can also do a minimal install um now it says uh creates a minimal plasma desktop install removes all extra applications and decide later on what you would like to add to the system now that's a good place to start i recommend people do that you know what i'm saying basically what you'll get is a desktop you know file browser uh package manager text editor and a simple web browser uh that's that's pretty much it everything else will be removed and that's kind of like an example but that's essentially what will happen if you select the minimal install so let's hit next uh they got pipe pipe wire this your audio setting so it's either pipe wire or pause audio uh and right now pipe wire has taken over from pause audio pause audio was there you know forever you know i remember pause back in the day but pipe wire has been developed and it's supposed to be a little bit better as far as sound on the system or managing your audio so i just roll with the defaults on my main system i'm using pipe wire as well so uh yeah now hard drives uh let's just go on and hit erase this uh you can do a swap to file if you want to uh you can do xfs or ext4 i'm gonna select ext4 i prefer ext4 uh you can do xfs if you want to um and then you can also encrypt right there and let's just quickly finish this but grub you can have a bootloader or no bootloader if you want to select a, another bootloader or if you want to add another bootloader but it'll install grub for you so let's hit next uh now this is where you create your account so i'm gonna just type my name boom uh, go down and uh create the uh system uh name and let's go down and type our password so i'm gonna just put uh kai os as the password super short it says password is too short uh kai os one two three uh and then one two three so that's cool you know at least it makes you want to put something in there a little bit stronger so let's put uh bang bang on them right fast there we go so it's kai os and let me actually type that down because i'm not gonna remember it uh and then we can reuse that same password for the root accounts. Uh, you can set it to log in automatically, which I never recommend you guys do. Uh, you can validate password quality as well uh, if you check that button, which I'm not gonna do because I know it's gonna flag that. <laughs> so let's hit next. And then this is the summary. It just goes through everything we selected. And then next, uh, and then install now. This will allow you to install KaiOS. So I'll be back when it actually finishes. All right, cool. So the installation is complete. I think it took about uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, I, I left out and went and talked to my kids for a couple minutes. So I know it's been about 10 minutes or so. Came back, sit down, and then it was done. So about 10 minutes. But of course, that's on a virtual machine. I'm not really doing much on the server right now. So, you know, it has a lot more resources to give to this virtual machine. But let's go on and uh, restart the system and then we can boot into the operating system. All right, cool. So we have booted up the operating system. Let's go down and log in right fast. You just type in your password here. Uh, you got a couple of options down here as well, though. You can sign in as a different user if you had a different user account on here. Uh, shutdown, restart, sleep. Uh, then also change the session. Let's say you had a different desktop environment on here. You can log in using that. Now let's go down and log in. So 
And then one, two, three, boom, boom, and log in. Boom, that was all. All right, cool. So we logged in, and the first thing that'll pop up is a system start menu. Uh, it's super dope that this is here. This is awesome to see, like I said, for new users that are getting into Linux. Uh, it's important to have something like this pop up, especially if you're new to Linux, because you have everything, you know, right here. As soon as you log into it, it'll show you how to do certain things. Like, for instance, you got widget styles, plasma theme. You can change the theme. You can change the colors, you know, uh, virtual desktops, uh, mouse behavior. If you want to edit that colors. Uh, font settings, you know, screen sp setting, you know, all kind of stuff right here, you know, as soon as you log into it. And you can turn this off once you get familiar with the system or get it set up so it won't pop up every single time. But I'm sure you can find it in the menu. Uh, that's typically where it is. Uh, but you can go in here and customize whatever you want. I'm not, I'm not going to really, well, let's click on the pl plasma theme just to see what pops up there. Uh, that's cool. And you guys already know that I like dark themes, so I'm gonna click on a dark theme, or let's see if we can get us a dark theme going on here. Um, let's go to this one. Let's just use that one. Hit apply, uh, and as you can see, it darken, you know, our board, and it's that that's basically the whole theme. So it's gonna darken everything. It looks like it uses different, you know, images as well. You know what I'm saying? So that's super cool. Let's go and press OK. But you can go through here. You know change whatever you want you know what i'm saying uh let's see windows direct um it kind of went through and changed everything so windows decorator uh so and if you've used plasma before you probably know how to do all this stuff you know what i'm saying but i just you know kind of want to show it for new people or whatever but i won't go through that but you can go into packages this will go through and allow you to install selected packages uh, that'll you know install all those packages that we have selected so you got to select them uh, and go through here see you click on it you can go through here and install whatever package you want like let's say we want Chrome you can turn that on and then you know go back uh, you can go through email clients you can turn on whatever you want and then it'll go through and install those packages and as you can see it'll bring up a terminal all you gotta do is type in your pseudo password which is your password your login password and it'll install all the packages that you want you know what i'm saying i won't go through and do that you know what i'm saying because that'll take a little time but wallpapers so this allows you to change your wallpapers if you want to you can download uh that's like the latest right there you can go to popular um and that should bring up like some different yeah, it looks like it's not, man. I don't know why, but you should be able to bring up, you know, some wallpapers. But I guess that's the only one <laughs> that's there. Uh, so we're not going to play around with that. But let's go to Docs. So, yeah, you got your Pac-Man documentation. Um, asking Smart. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, switching NVIDIA. So you got your NVIDIA additional kernels. So if you want to manage your kernels here. You know what I'm saying? KCP form. Uh, let's see. Under advanced. So you got your firewall, energy saving, energy saving. But I don't know if you guys know that. Well, I don't think you guys know this. But if you knew, you may not know this. Uh, but a lot of this is in your settings. But yeah, all this stuff is here. So it's system D daemon, uh, add user, uh, network manager. So if you want to manage your networking. Pac-Man Pac -Man Cash, Default Apps, KDE Wallet, Configure Search. Then we can go to About, and that just kind of covers the About, and then some news on Kai OS or KOS, and let's go down and quit, though. But, yeah, that's pretty much everything you need right there to get, you know, set up with the system. But let's go to our desktop, because I want to change out the wallpaper. Let's go down and put on something, you know, I don't know, something like this, or... Let's change it to something different. You know, I always have some, I don't know, something kind of weird or something kind of brown or whatever, brownish. Let me go down and do this. Uh, something weird, something different, you know, that I've never seen before. So, dope backgrounds, gonna <laughs> make that mud look, look a little different. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, under here is your, you know, start menu. You got pretty much everything you need. You know, that's your window manager, you know, Dolphin. So that typically comes with KDE. Um, you got pretty much all your base applications. 
uh actually let's see what we got on here as far as let's see we got neo fetch so might not be on here nope not on here so first thing you really want to do is update your system but i'm gonna skip that step and just install neo fetch <laughs> yeah it doesn't i mean you're not supposed to do this you know what i'm saying you get kind of mess up the system by doing this but i'm gonna just do it for just to just to do it all right and it can't find neo fetch so must not be in the list of packages oh yeah i gotta refresh but the thing is i didn't want to run all the updates uh so that's why it's not finding it properly yeah see uh whenever you install a fresh you know operating system most of the time it it has a lot of updates especially when it's arch based you know arch they push out especially rolling releases let me say it that way because you'll see a lot of updates especially you know if that operating system if they you know clear a lot of packages for their repository you know faster than other distributions you'll see a lot more updates come through but let's go on and uh press uh yes it'll go through install those <laughs> install those packages all right cool so the updates are done uh it didn't take too long but let's go on and install neofetch or see if we can install that right fast and yeah i can't find neofetch for some reason that's that's super weird uh neofetch should be there it's normally in most repositories so whatever let's go on and uh exit out the terminal and let's check out the system uh information information system that's that's what i want to go to information center uh so there we go we <laughs> we got a little something on here you know what i'm saying you can see that you have kernel version 6.0 uh 12-1 uh kde plasma 526.5 that's kind of what i wanted to see i could have pulled the kernel version from the terminal uh using uname um which that'll gave us the that'll that'll that would have given us the kernel version uh but kde framework version 5 and then qt version 5.15 so and the graphical platform is wayland uh it's not x you know anymore and that's just some hardware information of the system so if you want to look at it um you know look at your system you know what i'm saying you can check that out right there now system monitoring it'll launch it uh let's go on and click it uh, relaunch system monitor uh, there we go so this is super cool to actually see uh, this is Porta KDE you know what I'm saying it's awesome you know application for you you know then you got your energy settings you can go in here no energy settings you know, no energy information uh, and this is mainly just monitoring and you can look at your, all your devices uh, if you need to you know what I'm saying check out all your devices on the system uh, processor you know storage all that stuff your graphics uh, you can this is where you can play around with your graphics you know X, X server you know Wayland then networking as well this gives you all your networking information so this is super cool to see right here as well and then Samba status you know if you got Samba you know set up so let's go down and close that out but that system of information is a good resource uh, for you but uh, you can also go like the system monitor from here or you can type it in and find it if you're looking for that now Let's go into the system settings. Just want to go through this I'm not gonna go through all of the system settings for KDE if you want to learn it just you know uh, Go through it and kind of play around with it at the end of the day That's the way you learn the system but appearance, you know, you got your workspace you know settings personalization settings network settings hardware settings and like i said this is what i meant by in that stored up menu you can go through and modify a lot of that stuff that was in that stored up menu uh in here like firewall you can modify that input devices audio you know display settings uh input devices all that stuff uh, about the system that'll kind of bring up that same about or systems information uh, so yeah, I'm good to go and let's go and close that out, but that's pretty much it I'm not gonna go through uh, they got like a weird uh, Browser on here. I need to figure out what this one is play around with it for a minute, but this is Falcon uh, I'm not sure what this is, you know what this is based on uh, It's Mozilla. So it's a Mozilla application uh, I'm Not sure if it's based on I'm sure it's based based on Firefox in some way you know shape form 
it also says like safari in here chrome uh so really i don't know what this is let's let's actually check it out let's go to falcon not falcon.org and check out what this is uh and it says it's a kde browser and that's probably why i don't know about it because i don't use kde uh so it's a qt web engine uh kde web browser so i i, I didn't even know about falcon <laughs> so that shows you i'm behind on this desktop environment i don't use it probably people that use you know kde is gonna beat me up in the comments and say hey you don't know about this nah i don't i don't i never use really kde i never installed it like on my main system now i've used gnome for a very long time you know what i'm saying i use the xfce you know the longest out of all desktop environments because i i really like the customization you can do in there you know what i'm saying but other than that, I never played around with KDE. Now I've used some of KDE apps, like Kden Live is my favorite, you know, video editor. Um, that's a KDE project or application. I've installed that on GNOME as well as XFCE. And that's the thing, a lot of these apps and programs can be installed interchangeably between desktop environments. And that's what they mean by freedom. You had a freedom to install whatever you want and what you like, you know, based on you know what you're trying to accomplish with the desktop environment your workflow and all that good stuff so i hope you guys enjoyed the video that was kai os you know i definitely want you guys to really check out this you know operating system it's super cool you know if you like kde this is an awesome one and you also it's also arch based you know what i'm saying so you could definitely get you a arch system you know what i'm saying with the kde plasma desktop environment you know with all the tools that you need and all that stuff now please like share and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions leave comments down in the comments below and go on and uh recommend another distribution you guys want me to look at or check out you know i definitely like to check out these distributions they're super cool you know what i'm saying um it's super fun looking at distributions i learn things you know just like you guys learn as well you know from watching the videos or at least experiencing you know these different desktop environments just to see what you may want to try out in the future as a desktop environment that you install on your physical hardware so i hope you guys have a wonderful day and of course keep it tech